This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1089. Do you know how to tell your story? By Shalene Johnson of shalenejohnson.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator. This is the award-winning show, thanks to you, where I find blogs, get permission from the authors, and then narrate their articles so you can take a break from staring at a screen. And before we get to today's post, thank you to Zola. To start your free wedding website or registry on Zola, go to zola.com slash old. Zola takes the stress out of wedding planning with free wedding websites, save the dates and invitations, a wedding registry, and free easy-to-use wedding planning tools. You can conveniently manage everything online and in one place, saving so much time for couples. To start your free wedding website or registry on Zola, go to zola.com slash old. And thank you to Zola for sponsoring this episode. For now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Do you know how to tell your story? By Shalene Johnson of shalenejohnson.com. After our smart success seminar in March of 2015, everyone left a buzz about their story. In fact, there was so much talk about your story and beliefs that I knew we had touched a chord in people. Considering the profound effect of the messages from Bo Eason and Dr. Michaela Sarno, I felt it was important to share my observations and help you make sense of what it means to have a story. In case you're short on time, here's the cliff notes of how to tell your story. Number one, you have more than one story. Number two, your deepest, darkest moment story probably has something to do with your purpose or what you're doing and how you're doing it. Number three, not every situation calls for you to share the story of your deepest, darkest moment. Number four, most negative beliefs stem from childhood experiences or an unprocessed traumatic event, and that might be one story. Number five, once you conquer those negative beliefs, you may very well feel compelled to share that story to help others. Number six, your story doesn't belong in every speech or video or conference call, but stories in general help us to connect. Number seven, we all connect on a deeper level when we learn to be better storytellers. And number eight, if you don't feel like you have a story or any stories, I guarantee it's there. It might just be too uncomfortable for your brain to go there, but everyone has a story. Go to a safe place to figure it out, like therapy. Everyone has a story and you have more than one story. Learn to be a better storyteller. In order to do that, you have to do some work connecting with who you are and yes, it may be scary and uncomfortable for some. The good news is this, the more that thought scares you, the more powerful your story. Here's my big aha moment after smart success. The difference between those people we connect with and those who make us feel a little stiff, on guard and uncomfortable is that those people who make us feel a little uncomfortable are actually pretty uncomfortable with letting people get to know them. We can feel that. I'm sorry, you're not hiding it very well. The people who are difficult to connect with have a tough time connecting with others, even if they are at the top of their ladder. There's a reason for it. These folks haven't themselves yet connected with who they are and what they've overcome. People who are guarded are doing so not because they don't trust you. People are guarded because they don't trust themselves. They fear that they will let a detail or a piece slip out that will tip you off that they are not really what they seem. People who have spent a lifetime trying to run from, escape, avoid, and deny their past or painful experience often have become so good at it, they truly believe it when they say, I'm over it, it was nothing, it didn't affect me. But then why can't you talk about it? But then why is your mind so busy making certain none of those pieces slip out? Why? Because you still haven't processed it. Until we process that childhood event which instilled a negative belief in us, our ability to rationalize it is often at about the maturity level of a child. My suggestion to you is this. Don't work on telling a story that you haven't yet uncovered. Don't spend thousands of dollars and expect that someone is going to give you a shot of confidence that suddenly gives you the power to finally tell your story. You will have to find the courage it takes to connect with yourself. You will have far greater impact with your story in video or on the stage after you have worked through it yourself. There's a difference between telling someone about what happened to you and sharing the connection of your past. Storytelling is powerful only when it teaches us something. 
If we are just reciting our past and carefully making certain not to show emotion or connect or feel any part of it, then we are not storytellers, that's a narrator. To have power, our stories must move people to believe it is possible for them. Our story should help others understand that they too can overcome. Everyone has a sad time or a darkest day. Those moments don't inspire, lift, or motivate others unless we can articulate how we were able to overcome to be who we are today. You need to be able to connect the dots yourself first, and that often takes some outside help. Again, the smartest people I know, the best speakers, the most motivational leaders, all proudly share that they were intelligent enough to seek out the help of an expert or a therapist. Sometimes we are so close to our own lives that we just don't see the big deal or understand how so many things we do today are connected to our past. Everything is better with a story. Experts like my friend Bo Eason will help you become a better storyteller. He's not going to uncover your story. He cannot help you process your negative beliefs. That's your job. He will help you become a captivating teacher, a predator, a living, breathing reenactment. He will help you connect with your audience. He will help you tell every story with power. You have more than one story, but identifying the story that put a fire in your belly is something special. Understanding your purpose and why you have been called to help others and the reason why you love a certain part of your job and why you do it differently, that part surely relates to your toughest challenge. Imagine what it would feel like to stand boldly on the stage and tell your story without fear of judgment. Imagine what it would feel like to connect with strangers and feel 100% confident that they would adore you. It's possible. Action steps for how to tell your story. Step number one, consider seeing a therapist to help you connect the dots of your past. Step number two, learn how your past fuels your fire today. Step number three, be proud of that story. And step number four, become a better storyteller. You just listened to the post titled, Do You Know How to Tell Your Story? by Shalene Johnson of shalenejohnson.com. And thank you to Zola, the wedding company that will do anything for love. They reinvented the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. To start your free wedding website or registry on Zola, go to zola.com slash old. You can create a free wedding website at Zola in minutes. It's really easy to use. They have helpful tools to guide you through the entire registry process. And I love the designs. They have over 100 beautiful wedding website designs to choose from that fit any couple style and every type of wedding. And they're all free. To start your free wedding website or registry on Zola, go to zola.com slash old. That's zola.com slash old. And thank you to Zola for sponsoring this episode. Leave it there for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.